Yeah. yeah. Right? Yes. Yeah. Deal? Doing. Welcome to the Acquia Podcast, Drupal Technology, Community and Business. Welcome to the Acquia Podcast, Drupal Technology, Community and Business. There's a module for that? There, of course there is. This is a fresh new session at what I like to call Jams Drupal Camp. I am with a great open source friend of mine, Lorna Mitchell. Good morning, how are you doing? Good morning, I am very well, thank you. Cool, so this Jams Drupal Camp thing is on the one hand part of the Acquia podcast, and on the other hand, it is an idea that I had. There is um, certainly in the Drupal world, um, to, uh, of which you're now tangentially a part, Lorna, uh, you've been you've been adopted whether you knew it or not. Um, in the Drupal world, there's a certain amount of problem. The a lot of stuff that members in our community do is rather ephemeral. Uh, someone does a session at a Drupal camp, maybe it's not recorded, or maybe it's recorded, but after a year the site is no longer online. So a lot of our very smart friends are giving us great information, and it's hard to find it sometime. So when I notice a session that I think is very interesting, I'll invite a person to come along here to Jam's Dribble Camp on a live hangout to give that session. We'll have a bit of a conversation, and then that session will live on and um, hopefully be a little easier to find. I also then take those sessions, um, try to tag them right, try and promote them a bit so that um, you know we add more open to the open source. Okay. Um, I am going to hand over the screen completely to you, Lorna Mitchell, for your session on uh, New Wave PHP. Anyone who's okay. watching this video <laughs> without any context, uh, there is a podcast interview with Lorna that explains what we think we're doing here. So, Jams, virtual Drupal camp, new session, Lorna Jane Mitchell, take it away. Okay, so this is my new way of PHP. My aim here is to take everybody in the Drupal community. There is quite a lot of code in this talk, but I have lots of other stuff to tell you as well. Um, I want to take everybody who's currently using Drupal 7. Now, for most of you, that means a 5.2 minimum platform. And oh, so much has happened. So, so much has happened in the PHP world, and I am going to attempt in a timely manner to tell you about so much of this stuff. But this is the PHP landscape as it stands right now. So we have 5.2 on the left. 5.2 came out in 2006. We got 5.3 in 2009. 5.3 was packed full of amazing features, and even as a relatively junior developer in 2009, uh, it was a long wait. <laughs> a really long wait for 5.3. It had such great stuff in it. Um, but another three years, 5.4. With 5.4 came a much more predictable and regular release cycle. So you notice that 5.5 and 5.6 are much closer together. Each of those are basically 15 months apart, not three years. So PHP has really upped its pace. This means that you don't have such a long wait for new features, but it also means that the differences between versions is much smaller. So once you get kind of into the modern era, as I'd like to call it, then the, you can actually upgrade your platform. You can actually evolve a living, working application and move it along in order to keep growing it. I don't know about you, but I don't often ship websites and never touch them again. Um, for Drupal specifically, you know, you can build some really complicated applications um, with these tools, and they live and they grow. So then there's kind of this fuzzy cloud thing with question marks in it. Um, that's to indicate that this timeline gets a bit less accurate at this point. There will be a PHP 7. Um, there will not be a PHP 6. Um, we we kind of did have a, an unreleased PHP 6 a few years ago. Um, and a lot was written about that. There were books written about that. There were posts and announcements written about that. It's confusing. So we are, 
the next kind of major version release will actually be seven um, because it looks very different to that six that we once we were, we were once planning. Right now we're, we're, we're here. PHP 5.6 is out. What that means is that PHP 5.2 is long dead. PHP 5.3 is also dead. Had its last release in August um, in 2014. 5.4 is now security fixed, seemingly. So you won't get anything new there. Um, just if anything really, really dreadful is discovered, then they'll fix that, but nothing else. And that will be for another year. So through to probably August or September 2015, at which point 5.4 will be completely end of life. Um, the bad news, really, if you are a, a, a current Drupal developer, is you're here, 5.2, released in 2006, way beyond support, way beyond end of life. So stay, stay there, look, look at the world, look at the landscape, and look at all of these things that are ahead of you. I'm going to run you through some of the, not necessarily the best or the most hyped features, but the changes in the language, in the syntax, in the functionality, which I think you are most likely to either see or need to know about because it's a gotcha, or that you might want to use for yourself. And let us proceed and have a look at the new Shiny. The first one is super simple. We have an underscore, underscore, dir, underscore, underscore constant. So instead of having to get use the file constant and get the directory name of that, you can just do dir to mean this directory. That came in in 5.3. I recently had a reason to try and fix somebody's 5.2 system, and I could not get anything to work, and it was because of this which I use all the time and take for granted, actually wasn't introduced until 5.3. How frustrating. Another superb feature which was introduced in 5.3 is anonymous functions. Now, an anonymous function, the clue is in the name or, or it's the lack of a name. An anonymous function is literally a function with no name. So I know that a bunch of you are web developers, so you have experience of many things, um, and many things I certainly don't have experience of, including JavaScript. JavaScript has these anonymous functions as well. PHP has them from 5.3. So they've been around a few years, but this is one of the reasons that your core dev team will have been so, so keen to upgrade their minimum platform. Uh, because they're so useful just to declare a function and then use it immediately. So in the old way, once upon a time, here is an array of data. Here is a function. And now we can use array warp to output the, um, to, to work over the array and to apply this function to each element in the array. I love doing things with no screen because all that's happening is I'm like waving my hands and pointing. Just imagine that I am pointing and gesticulating in a very balletic manner. So the anonymous functions, it used to look like this. You declare the function, and then you could use it as a callback in array walk. 5.3 brings anonymous functions. And so the code now looks like this. I still have the array, but I can just do array walk and declare that function without a name in the single place where I'm going to use it. This makes lots of sense because an anonymous function means that it's not a function name in your global namespace. You can't declare a function to be used for a particular purpose and then suddenly find later that some other clown is using misusing your function for something else. If you are specifically declaring a function to use for a particular task, you can just drop it in line there. Um, like I say, if you've seen it in JavaScript, then you know everything you need to know. Um, if you know how to write a function in PHP, then again, you pretty much have your basis covered here. Um, you can see there is a function keyword, no name, a parameters list. I am confident you know how to pass variables to a function. Um, and then it can, uh, it can return a value or echo or do whatever else it needs to do. Anonymous functions, super cool. Another game changer. And again, this was 5.3. This one was packed with fabulous, fabulous, fabulous features. 5.3 introduced namespaces. And I believe that this is 
the root of the PHP Renaissance. Namespaces are the enabler which allowed us to start to bring components from multiple projects, multiple frameworks, multiple libraries into a single application. It allowed us to pick best of breed. So a namespace is something which kind of, it's a package name for a, for a class. Um, you can put functions in namespaces. Um, but the way it works is, if it's your code, it can be in your namespace or namespaces. If it's uh, Symfony's code, you'll see it in a Symfony namespace. Maybe you're using libraries from Friends of PHP that's got its own namespace and so on. So it keeps things really tidy. This means that when you use multiple frameworks, right, you don't need to include all their code. Every framework has a user class. Every framework has a log class. Every framework has it. You get the picture. The namespaces say which logger we should be using, which database connection handler class we should be using, even if they're called the same thing. It allows us to avoid the naming collisions. And it also allows us to have shorter names for classes. So the, the class name will be quite short, and we can also alias them. If you've ever used Zen Framework 1, it has class names 80 characters long. Not quite, but it feels like it. Certainly as big as I can put on my presentation slides. So let me show you an example with namespaces. Here is a frivolous example namespace library file. Uh, PHP, we put a single class into a file with nothing else. So each class goes on its own in its own file. This class will be called nonsense.php, and it will probably be in a Lorna directory. The first thing in the file is the namespace declaration, which says which namespace this class is in. And that namespace is valid until the end of the file, one of the few times in PHP where it cares about where the file ends. I've declared a class in Simmons, and it's got a word property, and it's got a speak function. And when you call speak, it returns you a random word. The way I use this code is, first of all, I've included it here. Um, you might see code which uses auto-loading, which means that you don't necessarily need to require or include code, but I've just included it to make my example work easily. First of all, I'm saying I want to use the Lorna nonsense namespace. Now, remember that Lorna is the namespace, nonsense is the class name. Once I've done that on line two, I can just instantiate a nonsense object and then ask it to speak. On that final line in this code example, I have um, included a, an example of how to instantiate a class in the global namespace. So I think you've probably seen the standard class. That's something that's built into PHP. It's not in a namespace. Classes like standard class or oh, exception is something that I often get wrong. Once you've used the use statement to bring a namespace into scope, then you need to lead with the global namespace separator, that leading backslash on the front of standard class. Otherwise, we'll be looking for an exception class in this namespace instead of in the global one where it really is. So that's a little gotcha to look out for. So that was 5.3. Some, some very neat things came in in 5.3. These are the stuff that I think you're going to really be really 5.4, again, there was a three year gap. There's a bunch of stuff in here. 5.4 brought a few things, but the one which I was most skeptical of and now cannot live without, um, there should be a special award for that. <laughs> And if there were, it would go to the web server. Uh, PHP, I know how to set up a virtual host. I have never had a problem that PHP does not have its own web server, even though many of the other scripting languages do have built-in web servers. 5.4, PHP shipped with a web server. Now, it is just a development web server, but I do use it a lot. You run PHP on the command line with a capital S switch, and then the domain and port that you want to bind to. It's basically that straightforward. I put a screenshot in here, which is, um, 
I'm starting up the web server and it says, yes, hello, I am PHP 5.5. I am listening to localhost 8080. And then you start to see your web logs just on the, on the command prompt. So I use this absolutely loads for trying out other people's code, trying out my own toy examples if I'm working on a blog post or a book or whatever. You can very clearly see what's going on. If you segfault your PHP, then your web server, which is made of PHP, will also stop working. So um, you probably need to run it with supervisor if you need to, it to keep running. But please note, it is not intended for production use. The reason it's not intended for production use is not because we haven't bothered to finish it. It's because it actually only, re only processes one request at a time. So your second visitor has to wait for your first visitor to finish their request. Uh, so it's not, it's, it's not a very useful tool. That said, I see lots of companies using it to run things like admin interfaces, internal tools within their own networks, and of course, to test multiple versions of code without having to change virtual hosts. There's a couple of other switches that I wanted to mention. So I've got a more detailed example of the web server code here. So for PHP 5.4, which of course you will all have as you move up to Drupal 8, then uh, the capital S to say, please start the web server and where you want to bind to. Note that if you're on 8080 and you start to run, for example, this dev.project.local, other machines on the same network can also connect into you, which is one thing which makes it really useful for within the office or within the VPN type tools. The dash T uh, states the web root that should be used for this web server. By default, that's your current directory. But if you are running this under Supervisor D or Upstart or anything else which is going to restart the process, you probably won't be doing that from the correct directory. So the dash T just lets you say where the web root is. Dash C for config. Um, this is strongly recommended because by default, the PHP built-in web server does not run with a config file at all. And <laughs> weird things happen because it's whatever defaults are built into the language and they have got more sane in sort of 5.5 and 5.6, but at 5.4, some of the defaults were really odd. So um, use the recommended development INI that ships with PHP and that will probably work like a charm. Finally, I have this file called routing.php. Um, there are quite a lot of examples online. There's definitely one on my blog. Um, routing.php is where you put the stuff that would have gone in HT access. So if you need to do pretty URLs or any kind of redirects on your routing, then there is a way of routing.php kind of goes before whatever's in your web route. So you can use routing.php to implement those kinds of features, even with PHP's own built-in web server. So this is quite a neat trick for testing code, also for testing new versions of PHP. You can compile PHP without overwriting your current version on your platform, and then use this web server without switching it out of Apache or IIS or Nginx, or whatever you're currently using. Um, I find it a really good way of trying a new version of PHP, just getting a sense of what this project is, whether it works, how it should look. It's quite, it's quite tidy. All right, just some syntax examples then. 5.4 introduced array dereferencing. Um, I have a function here called getList. It returns an array. We have short array notation. And my slide for that is in a couple of, uh, <laughs> in a couple of slides time. But you see on the second line this return, and it just has square brackets. That's the same as an array with round brackets. So that's it's making an array with those four elements in it. The section at the bottom, grab first item from list. You can call get list and immediately append square brackets to access a single record. Um, and this is super useful for oh, back-end calls which return you a collection, but you know perfectly well there will only be one because you selected by ID or something. So you can instantly dereference when you get an array back and you, you know you only want one element. Um, 5.4 brought in that feature. It's, it's such a, 
a small thing, but so useful that I thought I would share it. If you care code, code shortcut, this is really relevant, whatever level of coding you are at. So if you had just tuned out for a second, um, tune back in because this is different and it could be a gotcha when you are upgrading or working with a new platform. On PHP 5.4, we actually removed all kinds of stuff. But one of the things we removed was the short open tag config, config option. So you can never do pointy bracket and question mark ever. You cannot enable that. It is not acceptable. Um, you always have to do pointy bracket question mark PHP. However, if you were using the echo shortcut, pointy bracket question mark equals, that is always valid. You don't have to turn on short open tag support because that conflict option isn't there anymore. But this shorthand will always be available in PHP. If you're not familiar with what I'm talking about, let me show you an example. So, so th these two code samples are exactly equivalent. Um, it is something that we typically use in um, HTML templates when we have plain HTML or Twig. Um, then, and some PHP placeholders can be really useful. So, a template saying hi, pointy bracket, question mark, PHP echo exactly the same. So you can replace that whole opening PHP tag and echo with just pointy bracket, question mark, and equals. So it's a shorthand for echoing, dropping into PHP, echoing a variable, um, the result of a function call, you can access arrays or objects here, and closing the tag. So that echo shortcut is always available um, in 5.4. Always, always, which is cool. I like it. What else came in in 5.4? Here, for example, with the short array notation, which I just had a list of dwarves um, in a previous slide. So um, when I saw short array notation coming in to PHP 5.4, my first reaction was, oh, thanks, guys, because we don't already have enough ways of writing arrays. I teach beginners, and multiple array syntaxes is confusing. Um, to them, <laughs> and I didn't think we necessarily needed to make it more difficult. That said, I do use it myself quite a bit, and you will see it in the modules that you're using in the example code. So, you are familiar with this first block. You can do dollar game equals array, round bracket, and a list of indexed values. You're familiar with the second block, which is dollar game, square brackets, and then you can put names or numbers, or nothing to just append and set values um, against those array indexes. What is new is the final line on this slide, where dollar game equals, and it's exactly the same as the first example, but instead of having array and round bracket, we've got square brackets instead. It's not quite JSON, because we still have the PHP array equals pointy bracket notation, but it is a a shorter hand way of doing it. Like I say, I was not necessarily sold when I first heard about this feature, but it crops up in my own code all the time now. And is the main reason that we have, um, I like to include syntax check as part of my build process everywhere, because you know, if it runs on 5.3, it probably run on 5.4. Yes, but I managed to upgrade my dev platform first and then deploy invalid syntax to a 5.3 platform. Oops. OK, other things that got removed in PHP 5.4. I once gave a talk about PHP 5.4 in which I claimed that we had removed the nonsense. Uh, but <laughs> clearly not all of it, because there would be no PHP left. Here is just a few things that you might want to look out for, which are gone in PHP 5.4. We removed register globals. Um, it should be off anyway. But it does mean that those very, 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 very old PHP, PHP 3 projects, which I know some of you were still running on PHP 5.2 and 5.3 platforms, you can no longer turn on register globals. It was never a good thing. Um, and we have repented for our, our, uh, for our misdeeds and actually completely removed it from the language. You can no longer register long arrays. 
again, you may see legacy code which um, uses those long hand arrays instead of dollar underscore post and dollar underscore get, so look out for that. You can no longer enable safe mode. Um, it wasn't safe is, is basically the short description of what happened there. We also removed magic quotes because they weren't magic. Um, this was quite controversial because there was a couple of places where removing them could have made the escaping situation worse. Um, however, you're all responsible developers, please escape your database, uh, your values when you're using it, doing a database query. You can no longer turn on allow call time pass reference. Um, we changed the way that we declared and used references in PHP, and then we had this allow call time pass by reference flag for a while, um, but it's gone as of 5.4, so you won't be able to turn that on anymore. I think this is a good thing because hmm, either your function is expecting an incoming variable as a reference and it's going to operate on it, or it's not expecting it as a reference and it's going to change it and return it. So there should be no ambiguity. The difference really is just in the way that you declare it. So you may find that you need to just fix a couple of things as if you move an old application onto a newer platform. I imagine some of you may do in order to get the new functionality without having to pay for multiple sets of hosting. Oh, we turned off the Y2K compliance bug. So um, if anyone's worried about the impending millennium, then I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> we, uh, we removed that flag. Also, the ereg functions are gone. So this is some of the regular expression functionality in PHP. Um, you need to convert your ereg functions to use the preg as well. They are much more common, so it's unlikely that you are using ereg. But if you are, then um, you just need to replace them with the preg functions and update your expressions. OK, what's left? Oh, let me tell you about something. Now, I have labeled this as a 5.5 feature, but I basically lied um, because we introduced this password hashing. Every PHP website in the world has a login functionality, and we therefore need to store passwords. And we're just really bad at it. Um, <clears throat> it's just one of those things where I don't understand why there isn't a no-brainer wrapper for PHP. Good news. Two pieces of good news. One is, in 5.5, there is. And it's available in user land for older versions. So your code looks like this. Somebody gives you a password. OK, mine is secret password. You can use that to log into any of my accounts. Then we've got password underscore hash. That's the function that you use to create a hash of a password. So if you've been MD5ing passwords, uh, we're not going to do that anymore. We're going to use this password hash function, which will do a bcrypt. Um, I have used. For the second argument, the password underscore default constant. This is PHP's best security. So right now, it is bcrypt because that's the recommended version. If the recommendations change in future versions, then that constant will start to mean something else. So this will always be best practice. Basically, do it like this. If I echo that hash, you can see that I get this great mess of a thing, and it has dropped off the screen. There is more. I believe that they are 68 characters, give or take. This includes the algorithm that was used and the salt, so that if you lose your, um, everything's salted so that if you lose your password database, you, they cannot be reverse engineered or looked up against rainbow tables to work out what the originals were. So we've got the password hash function. That's how we know that somebody gives us a password. We hash it. This is what we store, this big mess here with dollar signs in. When they come to log in again later, then we've got the existing hash. We've got that from the database. They log in with their secret password, password, and we call password verify, offering the password they gave us and the hash that was stored. The password verify method knows how to look at the existing hash, see how it was hashed, and apply that to our secret password and then compare them. If you are not yet on PHP 5.5, I imagine a lot of you are not. Even before you go to 5.4, this library, I've got a link on the screen here, 
is you can just include the library at the top of your code and then use it. There's a little comment there which says, remove this when you upgrade PHP 5.5. And then you just take it out because the function will be available in the language at that point. There is a minimum requirement for this, and I don't remember what it is. I think it's PHP 5.3. Uh, maybe nine. There was something broken in bcrypt. So if you're running some kind of old Debian 5.3.3 or something, beware this library won't work. Um, but try to upgrade your platforms. And if you have a site that you log into, make sure you are using this code, even if it's even if it's wrapped up. What I wanted to tell you, and that is that PHP 5.5 came with a built-in opcache. Um, we've always just enabled APC in the past to get the best performance out of our sites, and that's great, and it was amazing. APC, the project got into trouble with PHP 5.4 because there were a lot of changes. And we eventually started using Zen's opcache instead for 5.4. It's available through Peckle. Um, and then it, it's actually included in the language in 5.5. The main gotcha is that it's disabled by default. <laughs> so it's there, but you can't use it unless you know to turn it on. So once you're on a 5.5 platform, uh, try opcache.enable and opcache.enable underscore CLI. I think the APC issues have been one reason why adoption on 5.4 is so slow. All right. So. Let's talk about upgrading your existing systems. This sounds like a nightmare, right? This sounds like just a recipe for spending a lot of time with broken code. Honestly, it's doable. If you're on 5.2, it's hard. Once you get to 5.3, it's a bit better. 5.4 onwards, I, I told my sysadmins just to do it in the middle of the day and not even mention to me that they were upgrading. Um, genuinely, it, it gets better. And there are lots of reasons why you might want to do it. This is a benchmark of various versions of PHP running the same code multiple times. And I've run it 10 times and averaged it out. It's not a very scientific benchmark, but it does give you a sense of, in relation to one another, how the different versions perform. So we've got the newest version of 5.2. Um, so that's the, the, the last that will ever be of both 5.2 and 5.3. Um, 5.4, I thought the 5.3 performance improvement was out of this world. Um, but they went faster again with 5.4. So it's it's not quite half the time taken to perform the benchmarks at 5.4 in comparison to 5.2, but it's not far off. So if you'd like a snappier website for free, hey, download the free software and use it. Um, 5556, five, five, all in the same kind of ballpark. 5.5 five went a little bit slower. I, I'm not really sure why, but I can certainly forgive it. Um, it also has built in opcache. So for most platforms, 5.5 five will perform approximately as well as 5.4. What isn't shown in these benchmarks, uh, because it's incredibly difficult to measure, is memory usage. The difference between 5.2 and 5.4 and 5.5 in memory usage is something like a 20 to 30% reduction in memory usage. If you have multiple web servers and you need those multiple web servers to serve your load, then you're going to see a really big improvement in the way that your application performs on a newer platform. Um, it's difficult to get scientific numbers, but my the migration clients that I have worked with are reporting everybody over 20%. Some claiming over 30%, but that seems like a lot. That's a reduction in how much memory they actually use running the same application under the same load. So now I've persuaded you that would be a great idea. How are you actually going to do that? How are you going to upgrade an existing running platform? OK. If you are on 5.2, um, I'm sorry, I can't help you. <laughs> in in 5.3, we introduced a new error reporting level, which is E underscore deprecated. And what that means is that you can enable this just like you enable E strict or E all in your PHP error reporting level. And in your logs will be included information about stuff which is working really well 
but which is not available in the next version of PHP. What this means is all that stuff I said we removed in PHP 5.4, that was all agreed and baked into the language before 5.3.0 ever got released. So from 5.3.0, everything that was going to be removed in 5.4 was agreed and was flagged with this E deprecated. Um, this has made a massive difference to upgrading between versions of PHP, absolutely huge. However, um, Dr Drupal, you've got left behind a little bit. So if you can make it to 5.3, um, and I know a lot of you are running on a 5.3 platform, then the E deprecated is absolutely your friend because it will show you, oh, you're calling this function, but it's not available in the next version. The arguments have changed in the next version. Something else is wrong. So turn on E deprecated, have a look at how big your problems are. Compile PHP, try running your test suite with the target version. So run whatever testing you normally run with, with that, don't replace your version of PHP, just compile a new version. Um, I wrote some posts about this recently and there are loads of um, good advice in the comments for if you're using, um, for example, Homebrew on Mac or MAMP or WAMP, then there's good ways to switch your versions around. I will make sure we get a link to that in the show notes as well. I showed you the PHP web server, and the main reason that I did that is so that I could show you how to upgrade. This is only available from PHP 5.4, but since everything else is end of life, I guess you'll be upgrading to 5.4 anyway. Um, run your application with PHP's web server. Just change into your web root, compile a version of PHP that you want, and, and try the web server. Um, it, it may well just crash out the first few times, but it will show you what you need to do to upgrade. So you can just create a branch on your application and work through what needs to happen to get your application running. Next, upgrade a test platform, upgrade a staging platform, get people clicking around, do whatever you normally do as due diligence before you roll a release. And finally, go for it. Um, if you run multiple web heads, you might want to just upgrade one or two of them. Have a look at their logs, have a look at their performance. But basically, if it looks good um, with the web server on an upgraded test platform, there is no reason it shouldn't go live. Um, and the further forward you can bring your applications, then the better the news is in terms of upgrade within the PHP 5 family. So if you are looking to start a new project or ship a new project, um, then you're looking for a 5.5 platform as a minimum. 5.6 is out. 5.4 is in maintenance mode only. These are the questions that you should ask your hosts. What versions of PHP are available? They get negative points if they can't go higher than 5.4, okay? 5.5 has been out for more than a year, and I'm saying this out loud in September 2014. You could be watching this in two years' time, um, in which case, yeah, <laughs> that's really unforgivable. Ask them about backups. Um, not necessarily because I think you need backups, just because this is the way that I usually measure how technical my hosting people are. Um, the way that they answer, if they can answer this question, then great, they're probably going to be fine, um, which says a lot about how many bad hosting providers there are in the world. I like to ask about Peckle extensions. Um, lots of hosts don't support them, but they're not hard. So the ones that can and will um, are absolutely worth identifying. So even if you don't need any extensions, I like to ask this question. And that sort of leads on to my final question. Can I get support with my PHP setup? Um, it may be that you don't need support with your PHP setup or you're running your own VPS and that is fine. Um, but if you are looking for, and especially if you're paying for any kind of managed hosting, they need to say yes to this question. Um, otherwise, they're just going to restart Apache if you have a problem, and they're not going to drill in and kind of work with you. I have lost count of the number of people that I have spent, you know, three hours helping just as a one-off job because they can't get support from their hosts. I did an unscientific poll on Twitter, and again, this is something that will possibly have changed if you're watching this way in the future. Um, and I identified a list of providers 
who do have new versions um, of PHP available on their platforms. Server growth, I'm not sure if I am just my entire Twitter following is a massive server growth fan, but server growth came up loads of times, as did Linode. My own VPS and stuff is all hosted with Linode as well. So I can vouch for them as having good control panels and being super friendly. Um, other people who also got mentioned, DigitalOcean, SiteGround, and Rackspace. I am sure there are others. So um, you know, maybe we could work on getting a list together. And if you have any good experience with hosts doing 5.5 or later, hosts that seem to work really well with Drupal 8 as we start to go production with that, um, then maybe we could maintain a list somewhere and, and try and make sure that we're keeping good advice available. OK, let's talk about Drupal 8. It's the future. If you're on Drupal 7, then you, you're somewhere over here. Even if you're running on a newer platform, which would be awesome, your features are stuck in 2006. And there is so much more coming that's new in PHP, that's applied in Drupal 8, that you're picking and mixing from other communities. You're getting off your island, and you're going to build the stuff that you've built is amazing, and I, I am tired of people telling you that if it wasn't OOP, then you weren't doing it right. You were. Drupal, as a community, you've built some amazing stuff. But we've got more features. The tools are improving. The performance is improving. And with Drupal on the newer platform, so many things can be built. Come to the future. We have so much good stuff. And I'm really, really excited to see what happens um, with all of you and with Drupal 8. So um, I have skipped over my resources slide. Let me just grab that. There it is. So I have made recently a video with O'Reilly. Um, so this is a shameless plug for my video. It does have quite a lot of those new tools, um, more code examples, of the namespaces and the OOP stuff that I mentioned. And if you want to get in touch, those are my contact details. I will hand back to John. Hooray! We're all about the shameless plug. You did very well. Otherwise, I would have had Thank to you. ask you to do that. That, <laughs> was, that was so exciting. I think I saw you do a very similar talk to this in Edinburgh. Am I right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Um, well, I, I kind of I got on my high horse about everyone should upgrade all the platforms. And actually, Seeing the Drupal community sort of beginning to build stuff with Drupal 8, starting to think about the next generation of platforms. For me, it's not about asking you to upgrade what you have. You can, and I hope this talk covered that. But also, there's so much goodness, and it's it's so new. And I've been, you know, for the last however many years, excited with each new version of PHP. Now you're doing this big version jump. A lot of people will jump straight to 5.5. And there's just so much on offer there. It's yeah, I already already said this. It's exciting times, but truly it is. Yeah, it's it's great, and that was such a clear guide to uh, the the usefulness of so many of these buzzwords and so many of these concepts that people are throwing around. So uh, I'm also really happy that you and I have captured this in a format that's easily shareable. Um, absolutely. Wonderful. Um, I really, really enjoyed seeing that again, which is pretty much why I asked you here, because I get this, you know, <laughs> private set of sessions that I actually want to see. And, you know, I get to pay attention to them and do them on my own time. So that's that's actually my, my trick here. <laughs> right. Lorna, thank you so much for your time. Uh, we'll see you soon. Everyone who is listening or watching this, thank you. And um, if you have questions, Lorna posted her contact information. Um, please subscribe to the Acquia podcast in whatever format you uh, prefer. RSS, iTunes, SoundCloud is on its way, as well as TuneIn Radio and some other things. So, um, yep, look forward to hearing from you all and seeing you at an open source software event somewhere around the world. Lorna Mitchell, any last words today? Uh, thank you for having me. Thank you, Drupal, for being amazing. And yeah, really looking forward to seeing the community at some more of it. All right. So yes, thank you, Drupal, for being amazing. That's uh, a great way to uh, get on a good side. <laughs> okay. Uh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs>